Hello NYWCites, I am the administrator of the NYWC message board, Robert Lottie. Going the Distance 2019 was a great show and what a wild wooly night it was. We kick off the action, I'm sorry, we kick off the evening with the 2019 Hall of Fame ceremony, which, uh, which uh, Shane, Crusher Dugan, John Kersey, Storm and Mike Norman, Paul Loria, and ECWA founder Jim Kettner uh, had come out as they inducted former champions, the Monstrous Monarch, King Mega, and the F and Show, Jerry Lynn. Very good, uh, very good uh, ceremony to start the evening right. And also with the whole roster out at the time, uh, Shane. Kudos to you, man, for uh, having the first match have Corey Cooper face Jaden Vallow in the opening matchup right then and there as everybody else was heading to the back. And the match was on, and Cooper and Vallow... Oh, by the way, I think this was... Uh, let's see. This was actually their second meeting because they faced each other back at Aftermath in March. And in this matchup, uh, unfortunately, they ran out of time with time to draw. But then Jerry Lynn comes out and says that the match between their match reminded him so much of his days of wrestling X Pac in the GWF. And he said, Jerry tells them, you know, I'd like to be the referee of your match at the beer at the at the beer fest in, in Brooklyn, which is happening the that would be happening the next day. Next matchup, we see uh, the Beast Man. Is that his new name? Number one, John Silver. He defeated uh, Chris Bishop. <laughs> and uh, I wonder why Brandon Watts was unable to make this show. He was supposed to wrestle Silver on this one. From there, in tag team action, we see the New York Wrecking Crew, Chris Seaton and Smooth Black, to take on the rep, Dave McCall and Nate Carter. Unfortunately, the referee declared this match a no contest and basically threw the match out, seemingly. Then, in a singles match, we see uh, Kota go one on with Kaysen with Forge in his corner. And uh, Kota actually was drinking a Bud Light but he made the mistake because I think uh, Forge distracted the referee and Kaysen, I think, blow, blow, blowed Coda and Forge took the beer can hit Coda in the head with it and Kaysen defeated Coda to pick up another win. Next up, in singles competition, we see Micah of the Cortez brothers with his brother Seth as he went one-on-one -on -one with Mouse. Now, Mouse went underneath the ring and both Cortez brothers tried to pull him out but they pull out Mouse, but it turned out to be someone dressed as Mouse, but it wasn't Mouse. And uh, the real Mouse eventually ended up defeating Micah Cortez in a very good matchup. And I don't know if uh, this friend of Mouse, I mean, you know, after when Andy Miller was ready to announce the next matchup, Andy Miller says, we have mice. Then from there, it was, well, you know what? I can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier, folks. When King Mega was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, yours truly, Alex Reynolds, came out and disrespected the king and, and I eventually uh, the king threw over, the king to the exception and wanted to fight Reynolds right then and there, right after the Hall of Fame ceremony. That didn't happen. But this matchup went on and Someone eventually not, bumped into the referee. Eventually, people came out. And we saw a lot of interference from ECWA founder Jim Kettner, uh, former Starlet champion Willow Nightingale. We saw Prince Nana, who held the NYWC Tag Team Championship with Mega in the past. And then eventually out came Storm and Mike Norman, Paul Loria. Uh, there was one man I didn't recognize. He had like a yeah, he, he had a blue shirt and he had a tie on. 
with it. And then Mikey Whipperk eventually comes out, spits in Reynolds' face, nails him with a whipper schnepper. And King Mega eventually put Alex Reynolds down for the three count. And quite a moment for King Mega, not only being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but also defeating Alex Reynolds. Next, they had a there was a battle royal to determine who would get a shot at the Fusion Championship next month at Trust No One. And it was won by the Man Bun Jesus, Johnny Radke. Among other participants were Aiden Bale, Mikey Whipwreck, Jay Red, Irish, Ruby the Firecracker Richards, Raymond Pena, uh, I believe the, that Rainbow Panda that came to the ring with Radke, I don't know if he was a, an official participant, but at one point, for all intents and purposes, he was eliminated, and in a botchamania moment, his mask fell off, and luckily he took the top of his bear suit and covered up so no one could see who that was. And as well, Radke gets a shot at the Fusion Championship, a belt he held one time before at, at Trust No One next month. Next up, in a return bout from last month's Master of the Mat, Sammy Pickles defeated Kareem Mink to retain the Starlet Championship. Up next, Bull James challenged nobody's better Michael Mastretta for the Fusion title. And eventually the Cortez brothers, that big tall suit who still has not been given a name, I guess. And they all tried interfering. Jaden Vallow comes out <clears throat> and he tries to help Bull. Vallow attacks the, the very tall man in the suit who bumps into Bull and the referee calls with a bell declaring Bull the winner on his qualification and after the match Bull seemed to take exception with Valo coming out. As a result, because Mr. got DQ'd, he is still the Fusion Champion. Next up, we saw the desolate one Rex Lawless defeat the self-made savage Cashflow Ken Broadway to retain the heavyweight championship. I really like this match, and very rare for Ken Broadway to be an NYWC. Uh, Rex retained, by the way. Up next, we are set for a tag team match to determine number one contenders to the tag team championship, as we saw uh, Randy Summers and Joey Conway take on the Benson Bros, Rad Brad and CJ, and before the match gets underway, out comes the Hand of God Town and the Greek God Papa Don and saying, you know, instead of you guys going out to determine who's going to face us, you know, you can face us. We're going to enter ourselves in this match and put the belts on the line. And the match was on. Uh, Papa Don and Talon defeated the Benson Bros and Summers and Conway to retain the Tag Team Championship. After the match, uh, Summers took hold of the microphone. It wasn't working correctly. And then... Uh, who was it? Yeah, Summers challenged on behalf of himself and Conway, challenged Papa Don and Town to a straight up tag match next month. Then, in the main event of the show, uh, Bam Sullivan defeated Flawless Blake Morris in a dog collar match, which, oh boy, I saw the use of kendo sticks, chairs, thumbtacks, a door. And uh, Sullivan speared Blake through the door to win the match. And Bam looked like he wanted a reconciliation with Victoria Von Black, but it didn't happen and she left the ring with Blake Morris. Person Unknown's time was a great sitting with fellow NYWCites Sam Katz and Tommy. Great seeing Steven Scogan and those two ladies sitting next to him. I want to meet one of them. You could see a nice meeting uh, owner Chris Perry. Uh, good seeing um, Kevin. Uh, who else I remember seeing here at this show? Uh, Greg Gruber. Uh, I forgot what else. Well, well, some personal notes. I mean, memorable quotes here. Thanks, John Silver, to Sam when Sam was saying this is awesome to something Silver did. Well, that was awesome. I know where I'm from. 
Cab Broadway to Sam during the uh, title match. There's another chair. Uh, this one kid to Bam Solo who was taking chairs underneath the ring. Right. Chairs from underneath the ring and throw them in the ring. I throw them under the ring and putting them in the ring. Thank you. Bam in response to um, to that kid. Now, there are some things I do want to address. Now, I do know that I pretty much know the drill, not only with NYWC, but with so many indie shows out there uh, that they have a tendency of not being prompt on letting the crowd in or starting the shows on time. Now, that's not going to be acceptable to everybody. That's why I know most fans show up long after the doors open or long after the show begins. They arrive late for one reason or another because they don't want to sit through the whole show and such. Uh, oh, uh, a big thank you to um, to Charles who works the door for um, putting down, putting us down for tickets. I mean, a week before the show, I sent Shane a text message and he never responded to it, so I don't know what happened. Uh, it's great seeing... Um, Malt of the Damager, Suntan, and Whiplash, who will be a part of the NAX show, which is taking place at the Sportorium Saturday, June 29th. Uh, other stuff to discuss here. I don't know. Even though NYWC, even though you induct only two, two individuals into the Hall of Fame every year, I don't know. Have you ever decided maybe let the Hall of have a Hall of Fame event stand on its own instead? Because I'm sure that's what really caused the the the, the 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 time of this show to go really really long. I mean, the show ended like just after 11:30 with an 8 p.m. start. You know, it's uh. I mean, I'm not complaining, but you know, and also you pretty much squeeze people onto the show because we had 12 matches on this very event. Does anybody know the entrance music of Chris Bishop, the New York Wrecking Crew, Kaysen? And Bam Sullivan? Anybody know the answer to that, folks? Oh, man. The, uh... Mm. I will say, hmm. Actually, you know what? Let me get into it. Uh, NYWC presents Trust No One Thursday, July 25th. I mean, that's what it says on the website, but no word if it's going to be at the Sportorium or not. But already announced, uh, nobody's better. Michael Mastrera defends the Fusion Championship against the Man Bun Jesus, Johnny Radke, and uh, the Greek God Papa Don and the Hand of God. Talon defend the Tag Team Championship against Randy Summers and Joey Conway. I would like to see Mouse and uh, I guess his new friend or family member who's dressed up like him <coughs> in a tag match with the Cortez brothers. I'd like to see a rematch between the Rep and the New York Wrecking Crew. I would like to see... Wow. If possible, since it didn't happen, John Silver against Brandon Watts. Hmm. Wow. Uh, also, I'm wondering that that tall man in the suit that hangs with Mistretta and the Cortez brothers, is this guy ever going to... Please, let's finally have him in a singles match. And, and I, well, I don't know what name he's going by. NYWC, how about it? I'd like to know. Uh, welcome back, Andy Miller, who hadn't ring announced a show since, like, Aftermath, I think, because he wasn't there for April Rain or Master of the Mat. And he didn't ring announce at A Night of Vigilance, which was the fundraiser at Copake Fire Department in early May. Uh, 
I did finally wore my King Mega t-shirt and I sure hope this doesn't shrink in the wash. Most of my 2X shirts tend to do that all the time. Uh, I was hoping Jim Lundis would have been at this show, but I don't know what's going on with him, why he hasn't been at the show. I don't know if he's not been feeling well or what his uh, ordeal is. Mm. Uh, wow. It'd be interesting to see where so many people go from here considering what happened at this very event. But I will say, had a great time, even though the Denezo sisters were not there with us. I really liked what I saw, so definitely can't wait to trust no one next month. Um, I think I mentioned a thank you to Charles, who works the door for the tickets again. And you know, the thing is, I don't have a credit card or a PayPal. That's really why I kind of would normally rely on Shane to, for the ooh, for the tickets to the show. Ah, shit, shit, shit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, I think. Uh, well, actually, I guess I'll give you guys a heads up. From what I understand, uh, Saturday, September 28th, at the NYWC Sportatorium, they present Till I Collapse, where they kick off their fall season, and making his return to the ring that night will be Willie Wise. Uh, man, I love NYWC, folks. <sighs> uh, great show, and um, NYWC rules. 